JavaScript is one of the most popular programming languages for today. The demand for JavaScript developers is growing almost every year, and the average compensation rate in most countries is pretty high. Furthermore, the JavaScript language is not only in high demand, but also a simple language to master. It may seem that it's enough to start learning JavaScript, and in a year you will get a well-paid job in the tech industry. But not at all. In this video, as a developer with over 9 years of experience, I'll show you everything you need to know before you dive into this language. I highly recommend you watch this video till the end, since these few minutes can probably save you 6 months of painful learning. JavaScript is a high-level programming language invented by Brandon Eich in 1995 to add website interactivity. He developed the language in just 10 days, so don't be surprised when you see the type of null return object type. Today, websites and services widely use JavaScript starting from the cute animations on the homepage and ending with the hidden user data collecting. You can even play all good games like Counter-Strike 1.6 in the browser. So, what can you build with modern JavaScript beside websites? Almost everything. What do Discord, Figma, Slack and Notion have in common? All of them are built with ElectronJS. You can also write server-side code with Node.js or create mobile applications using React Native or Ionic, which is also written in JavaScript. One of the greatest values of JavaScript is you can create modern complex applications by knowing just a single language. A full-stack developer's compensation rate is higher than a front-end or back-end position on average. However, learning JavaScript may feel overwhelming for newcomers for many reasons. Basic concepts like loops, conditions and data types are not enough to start real practicing. You will have to learn how to interact with the document object model, dynamically manipulate HTML elements, cope with graphics and animations, and finally understand how a synchronous thread works. Dynamic types of JavaScript may also be confusing. When we add up a string to a number, we get a string. But if we write a type string minus number, we get a number. Is it weird? We will talk about it later. Have you ever heard JavaScript is bad in math? The most hackneyed example is about floating point. When we add up 0.1 with 0.2, we get this magic number as a result. The truth is this has nothing to do with programming languages in general. This behavior is due to how the integers work in the world of the machines. So, Python calculated in the same way. Russ, C-Sharp and even Mark Zuckerberg, because he is also probably a cyber machine, calculated in the same way. Now let's get back to our example with string and number. Dynamic types of JavaScript mean that every time you try to do some mess or comparison operation between two different data types, JavaScript won't argue. It just tries to convert your silly code to the same type. In the case of adding a string with a number, JavaScript will always concatenate it to a string. But it's pretty hard to repeat with subtraction, and here JavaScript will not give up and will continue to process code. So, if the string contains only digits, the result of subtraction will always be a number. In other cases, it is going to be a special, not a number value. My favorite example of unpredictable JavaScript behavior is when we try to add an empty object with an empty array first and then swap it. And we get a different result here. Oh. My. God. Everybody goes crazy here. But it's just a typical syntax trap. In the first case, the left part of the expression is not an object literal. JavaScript interprets it as an empty scope of code, like if block syntax. So, unary plus before an empty array will convert it to a number. But we can't do it with an object type, because every array in JavaScript is an object. So, it will be converted to the primitive data type first. And we get an empty string here. And only after that, empty string will turn into a zero. Boom. Easy. By the way, self-JavaScript learning could seem an impossible task for you. I know this because many times ago I also was a self-taught JavaScript newcomer. It's important to know your studying roadmap and to filter unnecessary information for more efficient learning. If you want to get community and mentor support, I recommend you join my Patreon account. Various useful articles and videos can be found here, and a lifetime discount is available for all of my upcoming courses. Link you will find in the video description. If you are still watching this video and want to start learning JavaScript, you probably have a mental illness. I'm kidding. JavaScript is wonderful. So, you have three general ways to build a career with JavaScript. Web, mobile applications, and desktop apps. Let's dive into the web first. We can subdivide it into two branches, front-end and back-end. Spoiler, nobody uses pure JavaScript for creating apps today. So, if you pick the front-end branch and learn all the fundamentals, you will have to choose one of the modern frameworks. Industry gives you a huge number of technologies here. React.js or React.js or React.js. Okay, it's a joke. The most prevalent are React, Next, Vue, Next, Angular, Svelte, Remix, and Lee. The backend branch frameworks list contains Express, Nest, Goa, Meteor, and Socket.io. And of course, you can combine both of these branches and become a full-stack developer. With mobile applications, things are simpler. If you already know React, you are going to use React Native. And everybody familiar with Angular can use Ionic. 
Like if all of us for desktop applications building, you should know Electron.js only. TypeScript was invented to fix JavaScript and make it statically typed. Using this language, you can specify the type of every variable, object, array, and function props in your project. Let's take a look at this simple React component. It receives and renders a prop with a type number. Now, if you pad the wrong type of prop, compiler immediately informs you. TypeScript allows you to build a more stable and predictable code base. However, you will have to spend more time to describe all types and interfaces. You can face problems with third-party libraries with no TypeScript support. And possibly a few times in your career, you will fail in TypeScript generics hell. I've come across the definition of TypeScript as a language that solves well the problems it creates. This statement shows how controversial the community's feeling about TypeScript is. In the world of JavaScript, we have three common pains. First is browser support. The number of existing browsers is definitely higher than the need for their existence. The majority are pretty cute and friendly with developers, but some of them might set your chair on fire while debugging. Modern web viewers or in-app browsers primarily used to open links inside the Instagram app or messengers are real black boxes. The problem here is related to the JavaScript versions. Every new language standard offers new features to be implemented by browsers. Every browser integrates this feature in a different way and type, and some of them don't do it at all. So, don't be surprised when your client opens an empty page instead of your website just because he is using Safari. However, there is a solution. It is called Babel. Babel compiles new JavaScript features to old JavaScript syntax, and you can safely run it over the browsers. And this is where the second problem starts. You can just write code. Actually, you can, but it's not enough to build stable applications or websites. In modern JavaScript development, you have to deal with various instruments to set up your code environment. You need to use bundlers such as Vite or Webpack to compile your code to minified and optimized production build. You should add tons of config like Yeslin, tsconfig, pretrc, and many others. Also, it's better to figure out how all of it works together to be able to fix some non-modules problem after a failed package update. All these Mumba Yumba manipulations might be frustrating for newcomers. Finally, the third problem is a rat race. The JavaScript world is developing rapidly. New frameworks are invented too often, making developers feel anxious. Knowledge deprecates over a short distance, and you have to learn something new over and over again. And frequently, it's not about learning useful fundamentals. It's more about learning a thousandth way to do the same thing. It might be exhausting on a long term distance. So, we can say here, JavaScript seems easy to start, but difficult to go. If you decide to build a career in this direction, you have to be ready for an extremely dynamic environment. This can be both an exciting journey and an exhausting challenge for you. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and Patreon to get more useful tutorials and articles.